Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is from a rainy Philadelphia. It is just pouring down rain here, but I've got some good things to talk about today. This podcast is brought to you by PM Powered, a consulting firm to help you with the project, program, and portfolio needs. And I'm Wanda Curley, your authority on project, program, and portfolio management. So without further ado, let's talk about nine projects and, and there's, some of them are relatively old, but these were presented by uh, Hugh Woodward. And many of you, if you know anything about Project Management Institute, have probably heard about Hugh. But he wrote up these things, and then he gives his opinion as to whether they were successes or failures. I'm going to ignore that part and look at these as to whether they were successes or failures and analyze them according to the PM-powered model and look at it from an ICOM perspective. And what is ICOM? ICOM is um, impact is the I, uh, control is the C, O is the output, and M is the mechanisms or mechanisms are kind of like impacts and you make a decision around them. So let's start this. So the first one is the Sydney Opera House. I'm sure most of you have seen pictures of Sydney, Australia, and you always get that opera house. It looks like the clamshells. So, and it's supposed to be not clamshells, it's supposed to be sales. Um, I like to say that they're clamshells. But anyway, it's uh, the write up here says that um, it, construction started in 1959. It was estimated to cost $7 million and take four years to build. It was finally completed in 1973, and it was for a budget of ho over $100 million. So the schedule was 1,300% um, over time. So it was over schedule, and it was 250% uh, over budget. So is that a success or a failure? Well, let's look at it. What do the stakeholders think? What do the people in Australia think? Well, they love their uh, opera house. They think it's a fantastic thing and it's iconic to, um, it's iconic, excuse me, my dog needs to go out for just a second. Hold on just a second, everyone. I apologize for that. My dog is scared of the thunder and lightning, and we have that going on right now. So let's talk about the Sydney Opera House. So Sydney Opera House, um, it, the if we look at it, we have the finance, which is input and control on the ICOM system, and that is on um, one of the legs of the uh, triangle that we have with the PM powered solution. So it was the input and control for finance was miserable. Um, I, like I said, it went 250% over. Then results, the output actually was excellent. When it came and started being, the country fell in love with it. So from that perspective, and so those were the stakeholders, it was very successful. The quality was astronomical. It was great. It, it still is standing to this day, and, and that was it was finalized in 1973. The variables, which are inputs and the mechanisms, that wasn't looked at very well. So there were too many things going on, too many um, stakeholders in it. But when you look at it from a stakeholder perspective, it was a success. So in your mind, was this a success or a failure? Do we look at projects only from the iron triangle that PMI puts out, scope, budget, and time? Or do we look at the final product and see if it's acceptable to the people um, or the stakeholders involved? So from the Sydney Opera House, from a project management perspective, it was a failure. But from the stakeholders perspective, it was absolutely a wonder and, and it met all the criteria. So in my opinion, it was a success. They've probably already brought back enough money to have paid for it, um, but we shall see. So the next one is the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. So the 2002 Olympic Winter Games was a very successful project from a project management perspective, winning designations as PMI's 2003 International Project of the Year. It achieved the key dates. Obviously, the 2002 Olympic Winter Games were held on time, but it deviated from the conventional approach to success with respect to its cost performance. 
The project managers boast that they turned a hundred million deficit into a four hundred million dollar surplus, not just by eliminating nice to have items, but also by securing additional funds. Clearly, success was measured by profitability, not by achieving a specific cost target. So in your opinion, was this success? Well, let's look at it. If you look at it from the scope, which was input, um, the nice to haves were eliminated and maybe that's what they needed to do to get back onto budget. But it was a hundred million deficit and they had to go out and secure more funds. So even to do the regular scope, it was they had to add more funds so that the cost perspective was not done well. Time, time was uh, had to be done for the 2002 Olympics. So it happened. The results were good because the 2002 Olympics went off with very few glitches. Quality, some would say that the quality was good. Some would say it was average. Some would say it did not meet the needs because there were some uh, glitches with some of the quality aspects of it. The variables, uh, well, we have the input and the mechanisms. There were decisions made. They made decisions to go out and secure more funding. They made decisions to eliminate the nice to haves. So those were all variables that were controlled by the project managers. So the mechanisms, they decided on impacts that were happening to the project and they came up with different decisions. So was this a success or a failure? Well, from a project management perspective, I would say it was a failure. But from the output perspective, in other words, what the stakeholders wanted, what the audience at the 2002 Olymp Winter Olympics and the athletes, to them, it was an absolute success. So we can say it was a success from a stakeholder's perspective, but not from a project management perspective. So let's go to the third one. It's called the Batu Hijau Copper Concentrator. So PT Numont Nusa Tengaru's Batu Hajau Copper Concentrator was the world's largest greenfield startup when it was commissioned in September of 1999. It was an extremely complex construction project located on the remote Indonesian island of Sumbawa. And excuse me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It involved 1,704,000 1, design hours. 48,791,000 construction hours, 551 separate systems, and 19,200 engineer drawings and documents. Do you think this was a complex project? I would say it was very complex. Um, nevertheless, it was completed one month ahead of schedule and $100 million under budget. It was considered very successful, not but not merely because of its cost and schedule performance. Rather, it was viewed as successful because the production ramp up was faster than expected, producing a cash flow from operations exceeding 200,000 of budget within a year after start startup. In this case, the project team focused on the real objective that was to produce copper concentrate, not to achieve the cost and schedule targets. So my hats off to the project team because they were not only successful as a project, but they were also successful as to the objectives of the project. So finance, I would say the input and control was done magnificently from a project perspective. The scope, they concentrated on what really was needed, not necessarily what was written in the statement of work. Yes, they looked at the statement of work, but as changes were needed to real to achieve the real objective. They did change control that made sense. They didn't just do changes to uh, uh, to help the stakeholders do what they wanted to do. They stayed focused on what the objective was. The quality obviously was there because it was producing at 200 percent um, over what the budget was for the concentrator and the variables were understood. So the variables were inputs and mechanisms. So decisions were made around the variables and it was done and it was successful. So this was one of the few projects where not only the project was a success, but the output was success. The stakeholders were happy. Let's go to the project Orion. This is the fourth project I want to talk about. And it's this massive effort to develop Kodak's new Advantix photographic system was reputedly very well managed from a project management perspective. 
PMI recognized it as the 1997 International Project of the Year, and Business Week selected the system as one of the best new products of 1996. But Codex stock price has fallen 67% since the adjunction of the Vantic system, in part because it failed to anticipate the accelerating switch to digital photography. So what happened on this project? How could PMI select something that brought the company down, essentially? And how could Business Week do that? Well, they were only focused on the project. And back in those days, because um, I'm here to tell you, we didn't, as a project manager, I didn't really care if it met the needs of the stakeholders. It was whether I met the Iron Triangle, and that was scope, time, and budget. And evidently, this one met it beautifully. But they failed to understand what was going on outside of their company. They failed to look at the... Uh, um, the political reality outside of the company. So what happened with scope? The input was incorrect and the project manager should have stopped it. Finance. Finance was done very well. There was input and there was control. Time. Time was done very well. It was controlled very well. Results. The results, I guess, if you look at it from a, a cost, pers uh, I'm sorry, from a scope perspective, was done well but they forgot to look at it from a political reality. The political reality outside of the company was everybody was going to digital, but evidently the company's leadership wasn't wanting to look at that, and the project manager didn't have the power behind him, the human emphasis to go up to management and say, this is wrong, we should be concentrating on digital and being the leaders in digital. The quality was good, but it was immaterial because it wasn't accepted by uh, the end users who were going over to um, digital. Variables, which were the inputs and the mechanisms, so the mechanisms are the impacts. The, the project manager wasn't looking at what was going on from an environmental perspective outside of the company. What can happen on that? I don't know. But how could PMI see this? I don't know what happened here. So. This was a total project success, but its output was a failure. And PMI was duped into it, and so was Business Week. Um, my hats are not off to either one of those. But again, this was back in 90, 1997, so that was a little different era for project management. So let's go to the nev next one, corporate internet. Finch describes a project that involved the implementation of a corporate internet to globalize and improve communications. From a traditional project perspective, it failed to meet its success criteria, but not significantly. It was one month late and believed to have accomplished with a small budget overrun. Both the project manager and senior management viewed the project as successful. The hardware and software had been installed as successfully with a minimum of disruption, thereby providing all staff members with access to the corporate internet. But guess what happened? There was limited use of that intranet facility. It didn't bring in the objectives. It didn't bring in the um, business objectives that were laid out for the project. So was it a success or was it a failure? The scope obviously was maybe the way it was written, what the input was good, but it was uh, not good because the project manager didn't use their power to understand what the end user wanted and to change the scope as it was needed. Finance. Finance was done well. Uh, the input and control was done well because it was only a, uh, a small budget overrun. But really, was it a small budget overrun? It would be interesting to see what the follow-on project would have been to see if they needed to put how much more money they needed to put in there. Results. If you look at results from the uh, scope, the original scope perspective, evidently it was right. But the problem was the results were wrong because it wasn't accepted. Um, variables, the variables were not understood, and this is where there was an absolute disaster. Uh, the mechanisms, uh, which are the impacts, were not looked at and were not assessed for, and critical thinking wasn't used. So there should have been decision making, and it wasn't done by the project manager. The project manager failed to use his or her um, power. And so the human emphasis on this was overlooked. They didn't go to the end user and understand what the end user wanted. So let's go to the next one, plant water conservation. A manufacturing plant in a semi-arid part of the USA was ordered to reduce its water consumption by 10%. 
Although the plant was already one of the most water efficient facilities of its kind in the world, the project team compiled a list of additional recycling and conservation measures and began implementation. Several months later, the company decided to close down an orange juice facility that happened to be located at the same site, thereby reducing water consumption by almost enough to meet the mandated target. The project team was thus able to return the unspent funds to the company. Had it been focused on implementing the project scope according to the initial plan, this opportunity to achieve the real goal without additional spending would have been missed. So was this a success or a failure? The objectives were met, so absolutely it was a success. But did they really meet the scope of what was put out by the project? Uh, no, they didn't. However, they used the power that the project manager had. They thought outside the box. They used creativity. They looked at the strategic implementation that they needed. So they were being creative and understanding what could have been done. So it was probably terrible for the orange juice company. They had to relocate and everything else. But this facility was able to save a, save money and by returning money to the corporation. Can you believe that? That was absolutely a wonderful creative thing. So maybe from a project perspective, it was not uh, successful if you look at the project from a traditional sense, but the objective was met. So it was a very successful project. So my hat's off to the project team that did this. Let's go to number seven. Manufacturing Plant Optimization. A paper manufacturing company with five plants across North America decided to increase its manufacturing co capacity by, embark by embarking on a de-bottlenecking program. A project team was formed to install the necessary equipment and charged with completing the work in 18 months at a cost of $26 million. But almost immediately, the project team was asked to defer the major expenditures until an unrelated cash flow problem was resolved. Rather than stop the uh, work completely, the team adopted a strategy of prototyping the technologies on which the de-bottlenecking uh, de program was based and actually developed some cheaper and more effective solutions. Even when the project was authorized to proceed, the team continued the same approach. The project eventually spanned five years, but the resulting capacity increase was three times the initial commitment. Not surprisingly, the company immediately appropriated another 40 million to continue the program. Success or failure? If you look at the project obje objectives, even when they were told to stop stop work they decided not to um, and do prototyping what a creative way to do this and in fact the company thought it was such creative they put 40 million dollars more into that my hats off so maybe from a project perspective they didn't actually meet the scope but they used their power they used their creativity they used their strategy they looked at the end goal and they were able to meet it to the point that the company thought it was a, it was an absolute success and they put more money into it. So my hat's off to you. You may not have met the original project objectives, but you sure did understand what your objectives were and you knew how to change the uh, scope, the input to the project to meet the needs of the company. So we have two more projects to go. One is a laptop up upgrade and the other one is a senior citizen center relocation. So let's talk about the uh, laptop upgrade. The IT division of a major international company was upgrading all employees' workstations to a new platform. Happens all the time. Because the laptops used by the sales division were near the end of their leases, the project manager decided to issue new laptops with a new platform already installed, thus significantly reducing the overall project cost. Unfortunately, once the decision was made, schedule became the critical project objective. And the fact that the new platform was incompatible with some unique software uh, used by the sales division was completely overlooked. The inevitable result was an enormous productivity loss for both the project team and the sales division. So what happened here? The project manager had blinders on. The project manager just looked at uh, the time the schedule and said, oh, wow, I can meet the schedule better by just uh, issuing the laptops without understanding the whole objective. 
The whole objective was to bring them up to date, but there were different sa uh, softwares that were being used by the different parts of the company that m were not compatible. So you had to come up with something. Now you have all these people with new laptops and they can't do their work because they can't access the software. So the scope was looked at from a narrow point of view. It wasn't looked at with creativity and understanding. Finance ended up being an issue, maybe not for the project, but there were people not doing their job, so productivity became an issue. Time. Time was now, we thought they thought they were going to meet the time commitment, but actually they didn't because people couldn't do their jobs. Quality. Quality was awful. So quality is a control point, and it wasn't met. Um, so quality gives you the results, and we can see that the results weren't ha happening here. Variables, they didn't look at the variables. So this is inputs and mechanisms. They needed to make some decisions around the mechanisms for the variables, and they didn't do it. Uh, what happened to you, project team? What happened to the IT folks that should have stopped this in the track? They didn't use their human uh, emphasis perspective. They didn't use the power that they had to stop it. The project team and the project manager have the power because they're driving this project and they use their power incorrectly. This was, shouldn't have been done. They should have looked at the whole scope and what was needed by the end user and that wasn't done. My hats are not off on this one. So let's look at the final one, which was kind of serendipitous uh, in this project. So a senior citizen center in a small U.S. city was granted a parcel of land to construct a new state-of-the-art facility. They immediately began preparing to move and engaged an architect to develop the plans. They also recognized that they would need additional revenue to operate the new facility and the necessary funds were available from government sources, provided the center was accredited. And that's a key point, the center had to be accredited. Therefore, they also engaged a consultant to pursue accreditation. Both projects proceeded independently for several months. Can you believe that? They were independent and would have continued except for a chance meeting between the architect and the consultant. After discussing their respective work, they realized that the accreditation criteria required certain building features that the architect had not incorporated. Scarce funds had already been wasted, but the, that chance meeting narrowly averted a further 500,000 in rework. Can you imagine if that had not happened? Whereas if this was looked at from a program perspective, and it was understood that each affected the other, and a program manager was been assigned, this wouldn't happen, so let's look at it. The scope independently was done, but a scope from the program perspective was not done, and this ended up, had there not been that chance meeting, there would have been a, a half a million or more dollars wasted. Finance, yeah, they went over budget, but because of this chance meeting, they wouldn't have gone over budget more. Time. I'm sure the uh, the schedule on the project ended up being a little bit longer, but it was a disaster was averted for it being redone, tearing walls out and doing, and maybe having to put a new HVAC system in. So, and I'm just theorizing all this. So this was totally averted because they knew what they needed for accreditation. Quality, quality would have been a disaster but it ended up since they had this meeting that the quality was met the accreditation needs. So it gave the results that they needed to be accredited and receive government fundings. Variables, the variables weren't looked at completely. And thank goodness for the chance meeting and then looking at it from a program perspective that this happened. So mechanisms, uh, once they understood what was needed, the mechanisms were put into place to do proper decision making and just making changes that were needed for the output of the project. So this is excellent work, but it's a shame that it happened on a chance meeting and didn't happen from a program per perspective. But they understood the political rationality of this because they brought in uh, somebody that understood what was needed from a government perspective, local and uh, federal. So my hat's off to them. So was this project a failure? or was this project successful? If you look at it independently from a different, from the project perspective, it was probably a failure because it didn't need, meet its budget and it probably went over schedule. But yet it met the objectives of what was wanted by the Senior Citizen Center. Um, so it was a, 
uh, the objectives were met, so my hat's off to you. So just because your project was a failure from the true sense of the word, we've seen over and over again, it doesn't mean that your project is truly a failure because you have to meet the needs of the uh, citizen, of the end user, uh, the political rationality of what's going on in the project. So understand that you as a project manager have to look at that scope and make sure that it meets the needs of the end users. And if it doesn't, shout it out. You have the power to do that. If you are on a project team and you see that they're going the wrong way, shout it out. Understand what needs to be done. Look at that laptop uh, um, reallocation, just putting out new laptops. If somebody on the IT side had shouted out and said, no, stop, because we have to understand what the different softwares are, they would have averted that disaster. So if I know these are old projects, but if you were the project manager on any of these projects, I would like to hear from your perspective if you did shout it out and you were just ignored. So contact me. I'm Wanda Curley at I'm Wanda Curley, and you can contact me at Wanda at pmpowered.com. This podcast was brought to you by PM Powered, your uh, consulting company to bring you your project, program, and portfolio needs. Um, I'm also Wanda Curley, your um, authority on project, program, and portfolio management. Please follow me on PM Current. You can uh, follow me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and on Facebook. I'd love to see you following me. So without further ado, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next Monday.